<laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to another time out here. Uh, welcome to another week, our third week. And this is our anniversary week, actually, because uh, we started all of this on the 15th day of February 2021, I believe. <laughs> so if that is true, like I think it's true, uh, Wednesday is going to be two full years we've been doing this. Two full years we've been doing this. Uh, I'm not going to tell you it's been easy, right? It's, I probably aged a bit <laughs> doing it, I guess. You know, but I'm grateful. I'm privileged to do it. It's not a, It's not easy. I like that. It's not easy. It's like when I was in depression and I had several people praying for me, even my pastor of my former church prayed for me. And, you know, as much as I wanted a quick healing, I wanted him to just pray for me and everything. Oh, I'll be okay. <laughs> or the wife prayed for me. Oh, I'll be okay. You know, there was there is a wisdom and there is a satisfaction and there is a joy that it did not happen that way because it's also it proves to me for them that they're genuine. They're not using any or any extra power per se. Uh, so it brought me back to that place of faith that is God. It's not man. It's God. It's God. Right? We're all just representative of him right and we're pulling our own little part of it right we are all on the same journey right of faith you know that brings me back again to i believe that's about 2009 right i was living in california and i was down also around this period you know and i'm a i'm a i'm a papa egan kid right i've, 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 I've been following papa egan uh, for years, donkey years, right? Uh, this is my 40th year uh, walking in faith, you know, and that very early time I had been, I used to collect Word of Faith magazine, used to, uh, was part of the hospital visitation. I read the magazine, go and preach the sermon, you know, at our hospital uh, church. We organized for them at UBTH, right? So I'm a Word of Faith, faith, faith person. And from Papa Egan, I, I got connected to Kenneth Copeland. And in the dark period of my life, you know, I was looking for everything. I, I was looking for every wall I could rest my, my my hand on. You know, and Kenneth Copeland did have, they had a victory um, crusade, uh, victory conference uh, in Long, um, what do you call that thing? Long Beach, Long Beach, uh, California. And it was some distance. We stayed in Bakersfield, right? So it's about three hours, two, three hours to go down there. And we did go down and all I was just, I was expecting, I was just going to speak the word, just say one word. You know, I was going to have that magical experience, you know, just someone say something. I would just turn everything on for me, you know, and it was just nothing happened. <laughs> and that's been the story of my life. I don't know why God has made that the story of my life, right? I'm not the one that has received all those magical stuff that people talk about. No, no, no. Even when I came to faith, when I got born again in 1983, you know, I went on and I, and I said a sinner's prayer, you know, and I was, and I was expecting that I would just have a touch on the floor from heaven <laughs> you know it did not happen you know I had several people come out and give testimonies oh when i gave my life to christ this happened this happened that was not my experience god did not give me the privilege of having so special feelings right no 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 it's made it difficult for me because of the assignment the part he had for me to work it made it difficult for me so that I can be able to speak and share from experience, right? It didn't, it didn't make my road easy. <laughs> oh, it didn't make my road easy. Yeah. And today I thank him. It didn't make my whole road easy because that has made me all that I am. If he made my road easy, I would not be who I am today. Right? It's been painful and it's taken a toll of me but I'm grateful because that's made me all that I am to Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks for praying. You know, uh, here we go again into uh, Daniel chapter eight. 
And Daniel chapter 8, like Daniel chapter 7, occurred during the reign of Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 7 occurred in the first year of Belshazzar. Daniel chapter 8 occurred in the third year of Belshazzar. Uh, Daniel chapter 8, just like Daniel chapter 7, is full of a vision and its interpretation. Unlike Daniel chapter 7, where the vision was one-to-one -one correlation with Daniel chapter 2, where it talks about the end of the ages proceeding from um, Nebuchadnezzar himself. In Daniel chapter 8 here, it's not talking about the whole of the end of the age, but it's talking about specifically a part of it, a, a part which is majorly a time of uh, Darius, Cyrus, and Alexander the Great, you know. So that's what the part has been emphasized in, and the deliverance of, of, of the Jews is also emphasized in, in Daniel chapter 8, you know. So, um, but you, you question why God is repeating about the same vision three times, really more than three times, because if you look at what is also in Revelation. But here in just this book, the same vision is repeated in chapter 2, chapter 7, and chapter 8. And that's just telling us that God, it's important to God, you know, that we know that he knows. That, he know, that we know that nothing happens, you know, of its own accord. Nothing happens that takes God by surprise, right? Everything that happens uh, happens according to the foreknowledge and the allowance of permission by God. It might be his perfect will, it might be his permissive will, but it cannot happen unless he says, okay, let it happen, right? And like we emphasize, uh, as we're all doing um, in chapter one, you know, even the devil can do nothing except uh, it's allowed in the throne room, right? Uh, everything is, is in order in God's creation. The Bible says that the whole of his creation is held together by his word, by his word. Everything is held together right the, the consistency the congruency of the creation is held together by god you know through his word you know so that's what i pick away from chapter eight it's just that emphasis that, that saying that even when things are out of order there is an order in the disorder right so i should not be carried away by the disorder but rather seek for the order that is in the disorder right find a place where i'm looking for the hand of God in the seeming disorder because I trust in the heart of God, you know, and that's one thing I apply every day to, today in my life, uh, in the chaos of life and the trouble of life. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, right, not to get carried away by the turbulence. I'm learning not to get carried away by the shakings. I'm learning to not to be carried away by the by the seeming storms of life, the the the, the weather situation. I'm learning to find the order in the disorder of life. You know, I'm learning to rest in God. I'm learning to rest in God and find my placing in the seeming disorder. You know, find my rhythm in the seeming disorder. Find my wave in the seeming disorder so that I can, I can rock my rhythm. I can solve my wave. You know, it's possible because there is an order in the disorder. God is in control. God is in charge. Nothing is ever out of order. Even though it, it looks out of order, there is an end to all things. And that end is predetermined by God. And God judges, you know, and sets things in place. We can rest in God. We can trust in God. We don't have to lose our periods. Where we we'll find ourselves, where we we'll find ourselves in communist China, find ourselves in communist North Korea, we we'll find ourselves in Saudi Arabia, Iran, Ukraine, Russia, wherever we we'll find ourselves. We can still find trust in God and look for his order in the seeming disorder and find our rest in him, right? Find our rest in him. You know, that popular depiction of peace where you have the bed who is at rest in the midst of a storm. That is what God wants us to have. That's where God wants us to be. That's why the Bible says that we should give thanks in all things. Should give thanks to the hoarder that is in a disorder. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Anything you want to add to that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our lives are already pre-planned before the foundation of the world. And so I always go back to that fact, especially outlined in Psalm 139. So if everything about my life has been written out in this book and he knows everything about me from my down sitting to my uprising, it makes proper sense and common sense to just rest in him knowing that you are, his presence is assured and you are, it, it's read in our favor actually that uh, all these things that are happening around us, they are just giving, um, they are giving us the excuse to bring the glory of God to bear so that as they are pushing out, they are pushing out, we are also being lifted up, you know, and exalting the one who has called us from his love. So I just see that everything is rigged in our favor. So we just rest in his peace. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 We win. We won. <laughs> Bible says fighting a good warfare. It's a good warfare because the end has already been determined. We won. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the end of the story. You know, we won. We're just going into the into the in between uh, in the in between of life, but the end is already determined. We won. You know, that's why it's a good warfare. It's been it's, this warfare has been rigged in our favor. Our God has rigged it in our favor already. Ours is to claim the victory that we already have. May God help us do that in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll